Civil drafting in BricsCAD is easier and faster with Construction Notes Manager. So I'll download and install it from the website and the terms of use are straightforward. I saved to my desktop, ran setup, and when Windows told me it didn't recognize the file, I told it that I wanted it to run anyway. Then I went through the typical setup and at the end it told me to finish by dragging CNN install.list from my desktop into an open drawing and I let it show me the readme. Now I have the readme arranged at the side and I'll drag the list into an open drawing. It tells me that it's unloading what was there and loading some new menus for CNN and it gives me a note that if I want to use the CNM keyboard aliases, I'll have to type CNM alias. And if I moved CNM, I'll have to restart AutoCAD. Well, I didn't move it. Now what do I do? Let's look at the README. I've already done installation, I hope. And so let's go to demonstration. I can open this file from my documents and run the script when I'm in that file. So let's go to my examples and open this file at which point I'm really happy the BricsCAD is so fast and we've got some AutoCAD dust there and uh, let's see I'll type SCR to run the script And it does some CNM housekeeping, brings in some bubble notes, makes a keynotes table. It did some contour volumes here. Sometimes it's slow and sometimes it's fast and I'm just going to let it run and pause sometimes when I need to while it works. There seems to be no rhyme or reason to when it's slow or fast. Now it made a keynotes table, drafted some utilities, put in some lot numbers, it's drawing a profile, and then it offsets some curb, gutter, sidewalk from the right-of-way line using M offset. So I know CNN is installed and working. And let's see some of the tools that it's offering to me. The first one, Construction Notes Manager itself, is not specifically a civil tool. The way it works is I edit my project notes using this pencil. Then I put in some bubble notes, like this. And then I make my keynotes table. I'll try that right now. I'll edit my project notes. It'll bring them up in a spreadsheet, and I'll see the list of notes that I've defined for this project. In this project, we have every shape, just about every shape that CNM can do. And the first eight shapes, box, sir, dia, hex, L, oct, penrex, stay, penrec, they all start with two shapes that behave similar. Let me say that again. The first eight shapes each have a note one whose quantities are taken by adding line one. And it has a note two whose quantities are taken just by counting the bubbles. And then I can change it by putting a 12 in for the size of the water line and then saving and a spreadsheet will always say are you sure you want to save a CSV yes I do want to save a CSV then I go back to BricsCAD and I make a keynotes table it prompts me for the length how far down the page do I want the keynotes table to reach and I can just hit enter and it brings the keynotes in again and changes that 8 inch to a, to a 12 inch. My quantities, I can change from 
226 to 260 and rebuild that keynotes table again and I will before I do it let's say I do want to see quantities so I get this options dialog box and I say show quantities in the table and I rebuild the keynotes table and this time I see the quantities all the tools that are with construction notes manager are going to respect the settings of the layer settings file so let's go into it look for the notes key quantities and change it from 2 which is yellow to magenta save that then click OK to import and that changed without redoing the keynotes table since it was a layer setting and those are the basic three steps of construction note management editing the notes, putting in the bubbles, and making the keynotes table. And let's see the other things that were included in the demo. One is a contour volume tool. It works like this. Cont oh, let's, let's look at this aliases thing I'm supposed to do. CNM alias. Let's see what the readme says about that. Use the CNM alias command to activate or edit CNM keyboard shortcuts. All right. Do I want the keyboard shortcuts for CNM tools? Out of the box, this is going to be no. But I've already picked yes, so it says yes now. And I'll go ahead and accept yes. Do you want custom list changes to the PGP definitions? No, I'll accept no. Do you want some verbatim list duplications of the stock definitions? No. And do you want to edit any? No. I guess I have to type no. So I type yes, no, no, no. And now I can either go, well, now I can type control and pick a contour at this elevation. It doesn't really use elevations, it uses intervals, and it's currently calculating with the conic volume method. I can change volume method to average, but I like volume method conic. And I can change contour interval to two feet, and then start picking contours. And we would expect that since the contour interval is twice, the volumes should be twice what they were. Oh, except this one was only two feet deep. So at four, 21,588 is about, is twice t what 10,794.26 is. All right, so that's the contour volume tool. Um, utility drafter tool can do either existing utilities with labels or proposed utilities that presumably will have construction notes and are not labeled. If I type UT, I can type setup. I'll take a proposed irrigation and all these layer settings are in the layers file. Uh, let's say I have a 30 inch irrigation. It's RGRCP, so I'll draw it 37 wide, pick a start point, and then draw it like a polyline. Arc, arc, and then return. And there I have a, a irrigation utility. And I can do the same thing with existing, and they'll look somewhat like this. Oh, it also showed us multi-offset. The way this worked was, I said, M, O, F, and we'll look at where this is all written down, where it's documented, and it asks me to pick an object to offset, and then the side to offset, and there it does all those things. Or I can go into setup, and it wants me to tell it how to do everything, or, I can just hit enter to read the list from some saved 
drawing text and it tells me to pick the text and if you see right here it says ten and a half feet away is the pavement edge, nine feet away is the curb face etc. So I pick this and it sets those as the offsets and then it asks me for an object another object and I can lay out my subdivision pretty fast. That's kind of a nice help for civil engineering. And um, the other one, another one it did for us was lot numbers. Lot numbers worked like this. Lot num first number of series I guess is 10. Actually let's go into O snaps and let's set our O snap to mid so that um, I can do this really easy. All right, let's say uh, lot num, first number of series, 10, and the first point is the mid of there, then the mid of there, then the mid of there, 12, 13, and, uh, and so on, 14. Uh, let's see now. It also did a profile, which is very civil. This profile, again, is not due to any 3D modeling. It's just a drafter, and this profile was drawn from this profile data file in the examples folder. And what this looks like is it's got a bunch of cryptic stuff that mainly is station and elevation. That's the main meat of how this works. You can have some offsets for labeling. You can have some labels also. And you, of course, have a reference point to anchor the profile to the drawing. You have a exaggeration. And you have a format for the file. This says that the file has columns 10 wide. And you've got things that say it's a four inch curve and it's a little bit cryptic but there is a documentation and that's how this profile was drawn. Um, I should turn the screen, okay there, that shows how it works and what it looks like. All right, that looks like all the demonstration tools that were in the script. In addition to that, let's try a few other things. Let's do a bearing and distance on a line and pick this line and then pick this line. That's kind of handy. And then let's do a bearing and distance by picking from this point uh, and to end of that. Now suppose we have a really short one like this one that may not be able to fit anything. We might want to do a BD L and then L for a liter. Alright, that guy is annotative. He's M-text. So his so we would need probably him to be changed to point 0.1. Okay. Um, let's think. For this curb return I'll need a fillet, so let's use multi-fillet. The first fillet, let's use 20, and let's call that the face of curb radius. So I'll hit enter and it says first entity. Let's pick this cur face of curb, then this face of curb. First entity for next fillet. Let's pick this back of curb, and then let's pick the lip of gutter. All right, and we've got, well, that did not work right. The radius did not grow. 
and so there may be a problem I'll pause and see I'll try running it without any running O snaps apparently I did not check program it to check uh, for running O snaps so let's try multi fill it 20 and then the back and then the face or the lip all right that looks much better all right let's do some curve data for this property line we just type CD pick the object now we can either put that into a curve number block or I can just type LE for leader and it gives me the curve data but again it's M text and it needs to be 0.1 normally I draft on a black background but this is a new installation of BricsCAD so I haven't changed my background to black yet. Let's try that and see what we get. Alright, much better. Okay, let's suppose I need to get the area for this for each lot. So I'll use the boundary polyline command and then oops, I didn't finish it right. Okay, and then let's use the square feet command to pick that and put the square feet there so now we know that's a 5500 square foot lot which is kind of nice that was just the area of the polyline of that we also have square yards square miles and acres so why don't I try doing acres let's do the boundary of this lot and then let's do acres I think it's just AC. Okay, yeah, and that will respect if I change my units using the pause command, use, change my units to 8 and then do acres, I'll get a lot more precision. All right. I'm kind of tired of these big labels, so I'm going to use FF to freeze them which is not all that amazing anymore since AutoCAD has a lay freeze command but let's try putting stations on this centerline with stay CL it says what's the starting station as a real number well I'll just use a thousand ten plus zero zero and pick the polyline centerline there's probably a problem this is not a polyline so let's undo and let's turn it into a polyline. Polyline, edit this guy, turn him into one. Now he's a polyline. Now let's try Stacy L. 1000. And let's see if he'll label this time. Eh, not that great. Maybe he's still not one. I'll pause and see if I can figure out what's going on. All right, I'm guessing this old routine may have trouble with annotative text styles, so I just made the current text style non-annotative, and I'll try again. Still unsure here. Pick the center line. Well, yeah, that's better. I think um, it might be backwards. Try it again. All right, that was the problem. I thought this was smart enough to work with backwards polylines, but it wasn't, so I flipped the polyline around, and if it were curvy and complex, I would have had to start again with with a little piece, you know, explode it and somehow make it start at the, the end I want it to start at. Now it's 100, so there's 200, 300, and I stationed it. Not very fancy. All that's okay, but where do we figure all this out and where's the reference? The reference is in the Construction Notes Manager folder let's see where that is by typing options files 
and we see that Construction Notes Manager was installed here. I'll copy that and then we'll I'll go to my Windows Explorer and paste that in. And we've got the Construction Notes Manager folder and in that folder there is a CNM command CNM command reference. I can open that up and it's been sorted in order of coolness. But there is also a possibility of sorting it by category. Let's try the coolness one to explore a few more. But for example, first, let's try searching for multiple offset. Let's see if we can find I did multiple offset. And there it is. Multiple offset. Offset with one pick to multiple distances and layers. We can uh, also search for lot number let's see lot number it didn't find it let's see lot lot elevation lot num so there it is let's just look at this for a minute the coolest routines are either cool because they're they do something AutoCAD can't do, or BricsCAD can't do, or they're just really productive. Here's one that sets the angle of each individual in object in a selection set to match something else. Here's something that joins all the lines that are on the same layer, if they're touching, into a polyline. Here's one that rotates 180, rotates 270, rotates 90. It's simple but quick. Here's a really good nested X, X nested list. Um, copy base and paste base. Really quick copies things from one drawing to another. And on and on. That's in order of coolness. But there's also a way that we can sort this in order of uh, category. I'll say data sort, and if we sort it by column A and then B, I believe it will be in order of category. Eh, maybe it should have been des descending. Let's try that. Yeah. Let's try data sort by A descending and then by B. All right, now we have what's more like an index to all the commands. We've got stuff for drawing profiles, stuff for civil drafting, construction notes, horizontal control. We tried some of these. Dimensioning, text, and layers. The, some of the best ones are the layer ones. But you can look through this at your own leisure and try out any one of these commands and maybe pay attention to the coolness factor. Browsing through here for some interesting ones, I found one that's called Curve that draws an arc with a requested length. That's an odd beast, but sometimes really desirable. All we have to do to do that is say, I want a curve about the end point say of this and its center would be the center I suppose of this right of way and then I want the length to be it says negative for clockwise so let's say I just want it 10 feet Oh, I went counterclockwise. All right, so there's our 10 foot long arc. If I used CD to label that guy and then said leader, he is, he is what we wanted 
50, 10 with a delta. Interesting here is that it responded to the units. So if I say units uh, 2 or unit surveyors and then I do CD and then leader I'll get a different precision on my results. Let's look for another one. Here's an interesting one. Tap. Draws a sewer tap. So let's pretend the center line is a sewer and I'll just type tap. Pick that and let's say downstream is this way. The chamfer distances are 20 and 20 so let's change the, tap, the chamfer distances Two, two, and two. Distance, two and two. And then let's run tap again. We'll do one for this lot. This lot. This lot. And we can put those right at a public utility easement or anything. And this makes it very fast to draw those. This one looks interesting. Let's try it. Tap invert. Calculates the invert at the end of a perpendicular sewer tap by picking. I want to try that. Tap invert. Main diameter, 8 inches. Slope of main from manhole, 0.33. Slope of house connection, 0.0104. That's an eighth inch per foot. Select downstream manhole. Oh, well, gee, I don't know what that means. Let's just try endpoint. Invert of main line at downstream manhole. Well, let's say zero. Sewer main line. Uh, pick it. Sewer tap end. Okay. Select text to replace with selected invert. It didn't do it. Tap end. Text to replace. Oh, that time it did. 2.11. Well, that's kind of cool. 2.19. Okay. Well. I don't know what I did wrong that one time, but this is calculating all my tap inverts. That's kind of nice. Okay, anything else interesting? Here's one. Is tan? Is it tangent? You can check a drawing to see if it's been drawn with precision. You just go to this area here, type is tan, pick the arc, then pick the line, and it says they're pretty close to each other, to the 10 to the negative 13th. That's pretty close. The difference in their angle is 360 exactly, so they're tangent. I've been told that this one is amazing for quantity take up, takeoffs. Add the lengths of selected lines and arcs. Let's use off isolate, OFI. To isolate this lip of gutter layer and then let's use ADL to add up all the lengths of these lips of gutter and it tells me I've got 1832 so that was a real quick quantity of the lip of gutter not bad. I accidentally got confused about when I was recording and paused. So I'm not sure whether I used ADL yet, but let's try OFI to isolate this face of curve and then use ADL to select all these faces of curve. And I got 1832. Then I just use lay on to turn them back on. 
As long as we're doing quantity takeoffs, let's try text sum that adds the values from the selected text strings. Let's do some square yards, pretending this is pavement, for this, 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 and this. I've got a bunch of isolated areas with their square yards, and then we'll just do text sum and pick these four T X T sum. Pick those four. I wonder. why it says center of circle. Midpoint for text. Oh well, it added them up. <laughs> Sometimes... Well, I've rambled enough for now, and you can explore, but there's one called wall that does a similar thing to this trick with a, a polyline on the inside and two on the outside and draws you a wall. And I'll let you explore the command reference and see what you can come up with. If you have any questions or problems, let me know.